So you can help me with some numbers. Make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. All right, I'm probably going to need some numbers. Um, let me grab another. Actually, I'll just grab it from here. This was the one that had um, this data here. I'm just going to throw this up. Give me a second here. No burglary was zero payout and was 0.9591 probability. And burglary was a... $5,000 payout and a 0 0.0409 probability. All right. Question number 1A says, if you charge an urban householder $204.50 for insurance, what's the largest profit you could earn on that one policy and what's the largest loss? So you might remember, maybe, because we actually never actually, I think, figured out that number. <laughs> But remember, I gave you this example yesterday, and I said, like, what would they charge? I don't think we ever figured out that number. What they would charge was going to be the expected value, which is this times this times this times this, which is the 204.50, right? So that's the expected value for this, which means if it's a break-even scenario, which it wouldn't really be in the real world, right, because it's insurance, they're trying to make money, they would charge $204.50. So for the company... What's the largest profit they could earn on the policy for the year? $204.50. If what happens? If she doesn't get burgerized, they don't pay her anything, they got her $204.50. That's how insurance works, basically, right? And what's the largest possible loss for the year? $5,000 minus the $204.50, right? Because they still have her $204.50, but they're giving her $5,000 back. Yeah. Um, I guess they could get burglarized infinitely many times, I guess, huh? Yeah, I think this is a really stripped down version of a problem. So I think the answer to that question for this problem is no. Like once someone goes into their house, there's like a sign that says you can't burglarize this house anymore and then no one goes in because there's nothing left, right? So there's no reason to, to go in, right? So now the company wants to make some money, right? That's the whole idea. Assuming they're giving this same policy to everyone, they want to earn $5,000 per $1,000 customers, which is a very weird way to say how much money they want to make per customer, yes? All right. How much should you charge every customer? So if they're going to earn, if they want to earn a profit of $5,000 per $1,000 urban customers, that means they're making how much per customer? $5, which is not a very good business model, by the way. If you're going to run a business, don't make $5. You want to make more than that, yes? So they want to make $5 per customer. So how much should they charge? That's the expected value. So we just got to add that $5 to that, right? So 200, on average, they're going to pay out $204.50. So if they want to make that 5 you just tack that 5 on there, right? $209.50. It's not exactly how things work, but it's kind of a stripped-down version of... Uh, so you can understand a question. This question really has nothing to do with this class, <laughs> but it's interesting. It says there are other factors besides the location of the household that affects the probability of a burglary. What other factors might insurance companies take account? So when they get these probabilities, they get them from somewhere. <clears throat> if you ever call a company to buy insurance, whether it's life insurance, home insurance, car insurance, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions. Right, so if I pick up the phone tomorrow to call to buy new car insurance and my next door neighbor calls to buy new car insurance, we're going to get asked roughly the same questions. Okay, But when it's all said and done, we're not going to get charged the same, even though I live right next door to them. That's for cars. For houses, probably the same too. We might not be charged the same. So let's go with the houses since that's what this question asks. So what's going to be different between me and the guy next door? Pets. What do you mean by pets? Do you know if you put a beware of dog sign on your fence, your insurance company will charge you less? Do you know why? Do you know why? So what happens to the probability of me being burglarized if I have a beware of dog sign on my fence? It goes down. It goes down. It just 
lots and lots of studies that show that because those guys that are driving through my neighborhood in the middle of the day while I'm working right now, I should probably go home right now, huh? What are they looking for? Yeah, easy, right? They just in and out. They don't want to get caught. They're looking for easy stuff. What else? Okay, cost of the house, but he's right next door to me. So, yeah, so assuming, okay, cost of the house for sure. Would, would definitely play into it. Yeah. What else? Yeah, they actually ask you, like, you know, what's your schedule? When, with cars, they're going to ask you how far you drive to work. Same sort of thing, for sure. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Security camera. Don't, don't even need the camera. You know what you need? You need that little sign that says security. You just put it in the corner of your window. It costs like five cents. It's a lot cheaper than paying forty-five dollars a month for your for your thing. It accomplishes the same thing, huh? Camera doesn't have to be real half the time. You just see it. And now, what's the most common thing? Yeah, the ring doorbell, right? It's gotten gigantic, right? People ring doorbells. People see those ring doorbells. They're going somewhere else, right? Because they know there's a video that's watching. Anyone have a ring doorbell? Do you have the app? All the time you get these videos sent to you from all these people like creeping in front of other people's houses. It's kind of weird, actually. All righty. Uh, did I assign two? Suppose you roll two tetrahedral dice. Each one's numbered one, two, three, four. Make a probability distribution table for the sum of the numbers on the two dice. What's the probability? So this is actually straight from chapter six, actually. We probably even had that problem in chapter six. So we got one, two, three, four. My sums are... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each one of them has a, or each outcome, not the sums, but there's 16 total outcomes, right? Four times four, so there's going to be 16. There's, if you try to do this logically, it might work. There's only one out of 16 ways that way, one out of 16 this way. If you work your way this way, it'll save you a little bit of time because of the symmetry. How many ways are there to get a three? Two and one, one and two. So seven's gonna work the same. How many ways are there to get a four? Two, sorry, I, don't know, I can't count. Yes, one and two, two and one is two, thank you. Four, one and three, three and one, two and two, three, three here, which leaves how many? Three, five, six, four, thank you. All right, what's the probability that you sum is three? Well, that's two sixteenths. Then they want you to make a probability distribution table for the absolute value of the difference. So, I don't know. Let's just change this. I'll go right here. Absolute value of the difference. So, what are my differences going to be? I don't know how many there's going to be. I guess there's going to be a zero, yeah? And a one, and a two, and a three. Is that it? How many zeros are there? They're the doubles, right? One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. So there's four out of 16 here. I don't know. How many? This is probably the easier one to go to, right? How many threes? Just four and one, one and four. So just two. How many ones? Six. And how many twos? So twos would be four and two, two and four, three and one, one and three. You just count them up right. And the last question, which is probably the most important question of this whole thing, is what's the expected value for the probability distribution? I could probably do that with a calculator. Watch this. Six plus eight is 14, plus six is 20. 20 over 16, how did I do? Did I do it right? What did I just do? <laughs> I can put these in my calculator, but it's just this times this plus, oh, I just added wrong. <laughs> no, I didn't. Did I add wrong? 6 plus 8 is 14. I, I got it right. Sorry. 20. This times this plus this times this plus this times this plus this times that. Right. That's expected. I can put it in my calculator. You don't have to do it that way, but I figured that was faster. All righty. So that's one that you just have to set up all by yourself, right? 
rather than giving you the chart first. For each million tickets sold, the original New York Lottery ordered one $50,000 prize, nine, 500, blah, blah, blah. What's the expected value? Tickets sold 50 cents each. How much can this sit in America? All right. So again, whenever you get these problems, you probably want to draw a little distribution and their probabilities. So for each million tickets sold, oh boy, here we go. $50,000 is going to be one over a million, yeah? And then, um, what's next? 5,000 is going to be nine over a million. And then 500 is going to be 90 over a million. And then 50, oops, 500, thank you. 50 is 900 over a million. And what's the one that's missing? So you don't technically have to put the zero in if you're going to do this times this plus this times this plus this times this plus this times this, because if you put the zero in, you're just going to add a zero, right? However, if you're using your calculator to do this, you need that zero in there, right? Because your calculator needs that to do all the math. Anyone have how many are left over? What is this? 900, 999. Is that a, th is that a thousand? Thousand? Uh oh. I got to get my numbers right. So 999,000. Nine. Is that right? No. How's that? All right. I could do that on a calculator, make sure I get it right. All right. <laughs> I always have trouble with those decimals and those zeros. All right. Uh, what's the expected value of a ticket? So when they ask that question, this is a little weird because I know some people, um, actually, they never even told you how much they charge, did they? Yeah, at this point, they didn't even tell you how much they charge. So when they say, what's the expected value of a ticket, that does not take into account how much someone paid for the ticket. So if I'm walking down the street and I pick up one of these tickets, I have it in my hand, what's it worth? You guys tell me because I can't do that one in my head. The other one I could do in my head, this one I can't do in my head. 18 and a half cents, agreement on that, 0.185. That's just the expected value, right? All you got to do is list one, list two, and hit the old one variable statistics button. 18 and a half cents, all right. Oh, here we go. The tickets sold for 50 cents each. How much could the state of New York expect to earn for every million tickets sold? Well, we're going to pay back this. So that means we're going to make how much? 32, 31 and a half cents. For each person, we sold a million. Was that $315,000? Did I get my zeros right that time? Yes, $315,000. All right. And then what percentage of the income from the lottery was returned in prizes? Why does that sound so bad there? What percent? They earned 315000 which means they paid back 50 cents for a million. So they paid back, or they got, they um, grabbed 500, they, they, people paid $500,000, right? All right, they earned 385, 315, did I say 315? 315, which means we paid back 185. So whatever 185,000 divided by 500,000 is. 37, 37%. All right. What's next? They just go in order. It's four next. This is a little theft problem again. The passenger vehicle with the highest theft loss is a two door Acura Integra. I'm pretty sure that's probably not true anymore. There are 21.6 claims for theft per thousand insured vehicles per year, an average payment of $10,676 per claim. How much would you charge an owner of a two door Acura? If you simply want to expect regular, if all else fails and you don't know what to do, draw a little probability distribution. Anyone draw one? You could probably do this problem without, but if all else fails, you do that. You have options of, you know, it's like this one, right? No burglary, burglary. So it's like, is this theft? Theft. Theft. No theft. So the probability of getting theft is... 21.6 out of 1,000, which is 0. 0.0216. We set it up just like that problem, right? No theft is, 
Oh, gosh. All this heart subtraction today. Thank you. <laughs> 9784. If they get theft, theft, if they get theft, that did not sound good. If they get theft, what does that mean? <laughs> if someone steals their car, they're going to get, on average, $10,676. And that's an hour. Right? Without the chart, if you think about this problem, the zero doesn't matter, right? Like for the expected value, the zero doesn't matter. So really all I got to do is just take that number, the, the theft rate times the claim, right? That's going to be, so it's that times that plus that times that, but this is going to be a zero. So how much should they charge? Two hundred. Sorry. No, I got I got decimals all over the place here. Two hundred thirty. All right. Good. All right. All right. And was there one more? Six. Oh yeah, the old dishwasher. Is dishwasher? Dishwasher? Is it dishwasher? Yeah, you can't decide whether to buy brand A or brand B as your new dishwasher. Pretty important stuff here, right? Each brand is expected some at some point in your life this will matter to you, just so you know. All right. Right now it's like, yeah, just a dishwasher. Brand A costs nine hundred and fifty dollars with an unlimited number of repairs at hundred and fifty dollars each. What a deal. Brand B costs more. You know what's interesting about this problem? So this book, I don't know when this book was written, like early 2000s, right? So a lot of the things you've seen, have you noticed a lot of things you've seen don't make sense anymore, like the numbers and like like how much something like, like, like that New York lottery problem, <laughs> all right? A lot different right now. Dishwashers. What do you think of, about these costs right now? $950 in unlimited number of repairs, and every brand B costs more, $1,200. So these are real numbers. They grab these numbers from somewhere. How do you think they compare to now? <laughs> you might be surprised. They're actually lower now. They're really low. That would be a, this would be a, like a really, really super fancy dishwasher. Like we just spent like $700 on what I thought was a really fancy one, but... They're, they're cheaper now. It's, it's funny how some things, I think electronics are a lot like that. Anything that's like electronic based uh, over time tends to get cheaper, right? Um, it's kind of backwards of some other things. It's kind of interesting. So brand B is cost more, but it comes with an unlimited number of free repairs. Ooh. Which dishwasher you buy depends on the number of repairs you expect. So somehow you did a little research. By the way, I have friends who do this kind of research. I just go out and buy the prettiest one. It's easier. Yeah, so, like, um, so this is the number of repairs for brand A and this probability. It says find the expected cost of each brand, including the original price. All right. So um, brand B, we'll do that one first because it's easiest, right? Brand B cost 1200 bucks, yeah? Unlimited number of repairs. You're not paying anything else for it. Brand A, though, cost 950 but then we had we have to add to it, right? We have to add to it $150 per repair, and we can figure out the expected number of repairs by finding the expected value of this. So if we go this times this plus this times this plus, it's going to give the expected value. Someone's going to tell me that number. 4.1? 1.1? 1 .1? 1 .1? All right. So what's that equal? All right. Those are my expected values for the two things, right? And then they ask for what would be the advantage of each one. I'm going to ask you, if it's you, this is the last problem here, which one are you going to buy? It's a personal thing. Or there's no right answer here, right? I just, I'm just i curious. Tony, you have a question? Or? Right, so, right, so that's, right, so for the expected value, like this, what does this number mean? This means if you were to do this situation over and 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 over, this would be the average cost for that one, right? However, for you as the individual, you're never going to have this cost, right? So that's why I'm going to ask this question I'm just going to ask right now, because 
Well, how many are going to buy A? Yeah, it's no. That, I mean, that's a good question, right? For sure. I mean, you make not a, you make the amount of money that makes you worry about this kind of money a little bit, because otherwise it wouldn't matter, probably, right? So, yeah, I think I think the, I'm asking that question. Like, if this was like a a five dollar cost for you versus like a ten thousand dollar cost, right? So for some people this would be a struggle, right? For others, whatever it is, but it is a different question for sure. So let's just say money's an issue. How many are going to buy A? How many are going to buy B? Okay. So now how about if money's not an issue? How many are going to buy A? How many are going to buy B? All right. So, and Tony's question is a good question, right? Because if you're studying this and you're trying to decide, the actual number of repairs does play into this, doesn't it? Because you can't, you're never going to have to pay $1,015. You're either going to pay, you know, after the first repair. So the first repair gets you to $1,100, right? And then the next repair gets you to $1,250. So on the second repair, you're losing money, right? I think is what you're asking, right? So that's the real world situation of it. So the expected value is not quite like the thing you might want to use. So that's a personal thing, right? So a lot of people, and, and by the way, right now, here's the funny thing. If you, um, if you right now, if your dishwasher were to break down today and you make a phone call and have someone come in to have you fix it, all right? So most people don't buy anything that has any of this. You just pay the repairman, right? Anyone know what the repairman is going to cost you? So I have an ice maker that's broken right now. The guy tells me it's going to cost me $800 to fix my ice maker. So I figure I have three choices. Choice number one is pay this guy $800 to fix my ice maker. Choice number two, make ice the old-fashioned way. You guys know how to do that, by the way? You know, you can turn on the faucet, and you can fill up these little trays. They're pretty cool. You put them in there, and then they fill with ice, and you have to break them yourself. So anyone have those? Or anyone have the automatic? Oh, you guys got some of this. All right. The third thing, which in some ways maybe is what you're saying. What's the third thing? I can go buy a new refrigerator because it's not going to cost me a whole lot more than $900, right? So it is very funny right now that that repairs – I mean, a lot of people, we, we have done that twice in the 15 years I've been out. We just bought a new – we've bought new um, uh, washer and dryer or just washer actually because it was cheaper than paying someone to come in and fix it. It was just a little tiny bit more, but now we got something new. So there's all things that you would have to consider, uh, and it's a little bit of gambling too, yeah? If you think your dishwasher is never going to break, if you think it's going to break more than once, then you're probably going here, right? So that's the kind of the little flaw with expected value. So just remember, it's important to remember what, absolute, what expected value means. It means what happens if you were to run this exercise over, over and over and over and over and over again, which in the real world is what happens, right? It's just like the lottery ticket, right? You never win, whatever it was, 18 and a half cents. No one's winning 18 and a half cents, right? All right, so let's move on to something new. Why don't you pass that up? I'm going to start a new stream here. We'll stop that. I'm going to go do another one.